The B-21 Raider, which is the first sixth-generation bomber, is named after the Doolittle Raiders. Who are they, and what did they do to have the first sixth-generation bomber named after them? We are about to find out in this video, but before we do, a sub from you will mean a lot to us. The Doolittle Raiders were named after their leader, Lt. Col. James H. Doolittle, a famous aviator and engineer who had won many awards and set many records in his flying career. He was also a visionary and an innovator who had a knack for solving difficult problems. In early 1942, he was assigned to a secret mission that would test his skills and courage to the limit. The mission was to bomb Tokyo and other Japanese cities in retaliation for the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, which had plunged the United States into war. The attack had shocked and angered the American public and damaged the morale of the military. The U.S. needed a way to strike back at Japan and show that they were not defeated. But how do you do it? Japan was far away from any American bases, and the U.S. Navy had lost many of its ships and planes in the attack. The only way to reach Japan was by using aircraft carriers, but they were too vulnerable to enemy detection and attack. And even if they could get close enough, the planes they carried were too small and light to carry enough bombs and fuel for the mission. That's where Doolittle came in. He proposed a daring plan to use B-25 Mitchell medium bombers, which were normally based on land, and launch them from an aircraft carrier. The B-25s had enough range and payload to reach Japan, but they were too big and heavy to land back on the carrier. They would have to fly onto China, where friendly forces would help them. The plan was risky, as the bombers had to take off from a short runway, fly over enemy territory, and land in unfamiliar places. But it was also a chance to boost the morale of the American people and show the Japanese that their homeland was not invincible. It was a risky and unprecedented idea, but Doolittle was confident that he could make it work. Doolittle recruited 80 volunteers from various Army Air Forces units to form the raiding force. They trained intensively for several weeks, practicing short takeoffs, low altitude flying, and night landings. They also modified their bombers by removing excess weight, adding extra fuel tanks, and arming them with four 500-pound bombs each. They also studied maps and charts of Japan and China, and learned some basic phrases in Chinese. They knew that the mission was dangerous and that they might not return, but they were willing to sacrifice for their country. On April 2, 1942, they boarded the USS Hornet, an aircraft carrier that sailed from San Francisco with a naval escort. They loaded 16 B-25s on the deck, each with a crew of five and a payload of four 500-pound bombs. The plan was to sail as close as possible to Japan, about 400 miles from the coast, and launch the bombers at night. They would fly low and fast, avoiding radar and anti-aircraft fire, and drop their bombs on military and industrial targets in Tokyo, Yokohama, Osaka, Kobe, and Nagoya. Then they would fly onto China, where they hoped to find friendly airfields or crash land safely. But things did not go as planned. On April 18, the Hornet was spotted by a Japanese patrol boat, about 650 miles from Japan. The boat was quickly sunk, but not before it sent a radio message to alert the Japanese. Doolittle decided to launch the bombers immediately, even though it meant that they would have less fuel and daylight. He took off first, followed by the others, in less than an hour. Doolittle took off first, followed by the other 15 bombers, one by one. They flew low over the ocean, avoiding detection by enemy radar. They reached Japan around noon and split into groups to attack their assigned targets. They dropped their bombs on factories, docks, oil refineries, and military installations, causing some damage and fires, but also some civilian casualties. They also encountered some anti-aircraft fire and fighter planes, but none of the bombers were shot down. The raiders did not linger. They turned west and headed for China, hoping to make it before they ran out of fuel. But they soon realized that they had miscalculated. The launch had been earlier and farther than planned, and the wind had been against them. They were running low on gas, and they had no idea where they were. They had to rely on their compasses and their instincts, and hope for the best. One by one, the bombers ran out of fuel and had to ditch in the sea or crash land in China. Some of them managed to find friendly airfields or villages, where Chinese soldiers and civilians helped them. Others were not so lucky. They landed in enemy territory, where they were captured or killed by the Japanese. Some of them drowned in the sea or died from their injuries. 
Of the 80 raiders, 69 survived the mission, but three of them were later executed by the Japanese, and one died in captivity. Doolittle was among the survivors. He crash-landed near Tsuzhou, China, where he was rescued by Chinese guerrillas. He was worried that he had failed the mission and that he would be court-martialed for losing all his planes. But he was wrong. He had succeeded beyond his expectations. The Doolittle raid had a huge impact on the war. It caused little physical damage, but it had a major psychological effect. It boosted the morale of the American people, who had been longing for a victory. It also raised the spirits of the Chinese, who had been fighting the Japanese for years. It showed the world that the US was not afraid to strike back at Japan, and that it had the skill and courage to do so. But the most important impact was on Japan. The raid shattered the myth of Japanese invincibility and exposed the vulnerability of the home islands. It also provoked the anger and fear of the Japanese leaders, who felt that they had to prevent another attack. They decided to expand their defensive perimeter in the Pacific and to launch a decisive offensive against the U.S. Navy at Midway Island. This turned out to be a fatal mistake, as the U.S. Navy was ready for them and inflicted a crushing defeat on the Japanese fleet. The Battle of Midway was the turning point of the war in the Pacific, and the Doolittle Raid was the catalyst for it. The Doolittle Raiders were hailed as heroes in the U.S. and abroad. They received many awards and honors, including the Medal of Honor for Doolittle and the Distinguished Flying Cross for the rest. They also became a symbol of American courage and resilience and inspired generations of airmen and soldiers. They held annual reunions, where they toasted their fallen comrades with silver goblets, each engraved with a raider's name. They agreed that the last two surviving raiders would open a bottle of cognac that had been given to them by Hennessy in 1946, and drink a final toast to their brothers. In 2013, the last four raiders gathered for their final reunion and decided to open the bottle and share the toast, in honor of the 80 men who had made history. The last surviving raider, Lt. Col. Richard E. Cole, died in 2019, at the age of 103. The legacy of the Doolittle Raiders lives on today, in the spirit and the name of the B-21 Raider, a new stealth bomber that is being developed by the U.S. Air Force and Northrop Grumman. The B-21 Raider is designed to be a long-range, penetrating, and flexible bomber, capable of delivering conventional and nuclear weapons against any adversary, anywhere in the world. It is expected to enter service in the mid-2020s and to serve as a key component of the U.S. national security strategy for decades to come. The B-21 Raider is a fitting tribute to the Doolittle Raiders, who showed the world what American air power can do, and who changed the course of history with their daring and innovative raid. They were the original Raiders, and they will always be remembered. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified of our latest uploads. Until next time, stay safe.